Oh, hello. Today is an impromptu video. I just finished watching Meg with Books's Twin Test of Me. Uh, I don't wanna give any spoilers, but I guess this, this is the whole concept of this video is a spoiler, so. But let's just say that uh, I think we can be rightfully characterized as twins. You should go watch that video. I mean, I was on the edge of my seat the whole time and I have rarely been this proud of myself, including times where I've like, you know, achieved real things in life, like getting a promotion or being in remission, whatever. I was very excited about this. So I was like, well, if we are twins, I clearly need to read some recommendations for men. So I grabbed her my top 10 murder mystery books of all time video and I'm thinking I think that this could be a good one for us to grab some recommendations from her on. Now I will tell you because I am uh, somewhat older than her there's a good chance that I've read some of these already just because I've had more time to read so we may have to go to another video depending on how this works out but I'm looking for three books. She read three books for me so I'm looking for three books to read from her. So let's hit play and see how we do. She's so much better at video editing than I am. Hello, my loves. The hat is back out, not because it's TV Oh yeah, like she wears a cute them. little deer movie. stalker hat today, whenever she's doing this. My top 10 murder mysteries of all time ranked. <laughs> it's probably the most important thing. Also, she is life. the queen of the memes. My top murder mysteries. I picked my favorite. Oh my gosh, she's adorable. Her little Sherlock cosplay light adorable. Favorite. Okay, everyone, it's time to get into my top 10 murder mysteries of all time. <laughs> I just don't think this is like great for me. I don't want to do it. This was very actually very, very hard. And I have been very strict. There's no missing person mysteries on here. Some honorable mentions like of missing person mysteries, like the project. This is probably my- I will mention, she's displaying prominently the strange case of the alchemist daughter. This is where I'm getting a little nervous because I know she has some books that she absolutely loves that I don't. That's a great example of one that I TNF'd and is like one of her all time faves. So we'll see. But yeah, I'm okay. Let's hit play and see how we do. With a civilian who ends up acting as a detective or like a closed circle mystery, stuff like that. That is what we are talking about here. Yes. And this, first one, this, this is we, we, we are a line that we both, we we're Nancy Drew bitches. See, we mystery, just like a mystery. Like, you have to blow my socks off to get five stars. Same. So I haven't even got 10 murder mysteries I've given five stars. And I've, again, I've been very strict. There's one book on here that's like, oh, well, that makes me even more proud of my twin test, but you should go watch and find out why. It's a very controversial book when people read it. It is The Last okay. by Hannah Jameson. Now, the ending- Oh, I really like this too. I also gave it four stars. <laughs> well, I She's absolutely right. The ending of that is awful, but it's really entertaining, like up to that point. Ending. You'll be reading it and you'll be like, hang on. We've just entered a different book. Like, also, the UK the edition same, is like, so much more lovely than mine is. Like, what the fuck is happening? But essentially, the world has ended- Okay. Our twinsiness is being reinforced though because I also gave this four stars and I also enjoyed it. Hell, you wait, you okay. survive. Then so that one I've already read. Do to read. There's something that's a bit different. I don't think many people give this five stars because the ending is so out of the blue that yeah, no one will hated expect the it. And a lot of people. Then we have another four star, and that is another one which I also five gave four stars, stars to. Really we really are twins. Only by Cheryl Lapina. Yes, okay. for my patron book club, and it was my least favorite show in the oh, universe so far. But I really like this one. We have a group of guests go to this hotel for this like break. They're snowed in. Yeah, it, the setup for this. Is like, just Mara Candy. My so. favorite, you know, my favorite tropes here. Girl, same. Nothing new, nothing changed, same old shit. Big hotel, like I, the things that she likes about an unwanted guest are also the things that I want, I enjoy. I'm getting into five stars. Now this book, I think I actually okay. So we're to the five star five, level. But now in my head, it's definitely a five star. I think about this one a lot as well. It is the Christy? murder of Roger Ackroyd by Agatha Christie. Oh, okay. So, me and so Agatha I Christie have a strange relationship. Where I, I would give it four stars. Hate some of her best. But some of her books have oh, been like on yeah, my worst she, of the year list. She doesn't love Christy the way that I love Christy, but... <laughs> But this one yeah, is she so sometimes so this doesn't is love them. But Roger Ackroyd is not one of my favorites, it. like but it is a classic. I think this is a very respectable choice. Murdered, and he is and like the fact that she's got a Christie on here, but well. coming at number seven is number seven the book that I was like, oh, I don't know if it's quite a murder mystery. It's like pitched not as a murder mystery. It was a like murder mystery. One, but I don't know if it's 
why a murder mystery because the murder doesn't really happen until the end but it's got a detective duo it's got like a mystery okay, and murder then doesn't happen until the end that then carries on the story so i'm gonna allow Where's it she going i'm gonna allow it it is the devil and the dark water oh by interesting Harrison. so i feel okay. like this author is more popular for the seven and a half yeah, guests have... of edmund hardcastle yeah okay so i have this book but i haven't read it so i think this is our first tbr pick i have the ebook i probably well, Brutus Detective, but he is imprisoned on this ship. He is literally in a jail. He can't okay, do anything. Okay, the world's greatest like, detective like, duo, is in like his prison. right hand man, his Watson, is traveling on the ship. And so it's up to him to kind of discover this mystery of what's oh, going on board. Interesting. There's, like, symbols going up on the ship. It's, oh, did I say it's set on a ship? We're set on a ship. <laughs> so I love, again, that like. Closed, okay. Like, we're locked in. She's pitching this way better than anybody else has ever pitched this, and I'm. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm intrigued. There's dying, there's strange sounds, there's strange symbols appearing, and it's up to our main character to kind of figure out what's going on. And I really Ooh, love the historical setting in this. I thought it was very vivid. She's got on that setting. edition. I loved the relationships in this. Um, our protagonist, so the detective's like right hand man, um, befriends the wife of like the head of the ship, and them trying to solve the murder together is very very fun. I also just felt like it was really well written. I really loved the writing, okay. the pacing. That was my biggest uh, critique of the seven and a half deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle was that I could tell it was a debut, but maybe this is better. Pointing for me, but I think I still give it five stars. Okay. I enjoyed the rest of the book so much, but the ending again is left field. I'm. Like, it's hard to pull off the ending of a mystery. It really that. is. Number six on this list is one that I feel like some of you are going to be surprised to see, but it is One by One by Ruth Ware. Yes, <laughs> I'm also somebody who loves this book, and no one else does. It's like another one of Ruth Ware's thrillers, but it's not. It's, it's not a mystery. A this is a traditional closed circle isolated murder mystery let me hear you say it amen <laughs> it. oh my god it's so good so we have this it's company so good called okay Snape, which is like See, we really we are of, like, twins a spotify and twitter like, okay so i've read that one i gave that one four and a half i should mention while she's talking about this um i'm I call a five star an all time favorite. I think that would be a little bit unreasonable. So I am looking for like four, four and a halfs. I think that that would map into her four and a half, five star territory. Like, I don't think we basically, we don't rate books exactly the same way. So I, anything four or up, I would consider to be a hit for the two of us. Okay. So I've already read one by one. So that's not going to go on the TBR. Number five okay. is Number In the five. Market for Murder by T.E. Kinsey. So if you've watched my channel a lot, you'll know I this have is, never heard of well, this Well, I was going to say my favorite cozy mystery series, but it's the only one that I really read. I don't, I'm trying to make my way through this series before I like, start loads of others. This okay. is the second in the Lady Hardcastle mysteries. We're following, like, it's like 1908, 1909, 1910. I'm a little bit of a hard sell on a cozy, but based on our twin status... <laughs> I'm willing to give this a try. Hello, everyone. We are going to pretend we didn't hear that. They're best friends. They've been best friends for a very long time. They've accompanied each other That's for a very okay. Long time. I have heard and her talking about this, this series town, before. Which you know, quaint English town, supposed to be them retiring. Turns out it's the murder hotspot of the world. <laughs> which I love. It's like Cabot Cove or Saint Mary Mead. We love it. We love it when there's like a random place where there's a ton of murder. Three separate mysteries. Midsummer all of, of Midsummer murders. murders. There's one where like something's been stolen and stuff, but there is at least one, if not two. Okay, I am not gonna start at the beginning. I'm gonna just start with this one if I pick it. I'll just go, it's the second book. Links, but the way that the stories overlapped each other, I thought was really, okay. really well done. Listen, you need to listen to the audio books of these books if you're gonna read them. I love the relationship between Lady Hart oh, and Oh, she's Slow. recommending they're funny, the they're audio. They're lighthearted. Okay, they're I can see if I have town. access to the palette cleansers they're so easy to read i will like i love about a palette the cleansing I mystery I yes I okay perfect crazy mysteries again i love the historical setting i often like murder mysteries with like a historical setting i think it i do bit, too i enjoy the extra and yeah I just, it, it makes it also easier to suspend disbelief i've read the first three i'm really excited to read number four soon you know um, there's not cell phones and like dna and stuff to help them out I wanted to give cozy mysteries a try this would be my number one obviously okay i'm always interested in trying to find find a cozy that works for me is a kind good of a hard girl's murder by holly jackson okay. so this i picked this as a five-star prediction for me and i ended up giving it four so i think that that counts as another twin i wonder let's stay tuned because i have the sequel to this and if she likes the sequel as well 
maybe that could be a third book for us to read. She's doing it as like a school project, but this is so much fun because it's mixed media. We've got interviews, we've got police reports. Yeah, and I didn't know that until I read it, but the mixed media aspect is really fun. Right. I mean, this series as a whole is one of my favorite series. The journey that- Okay. She's saying that she loves the series. So I would say- Obviously. And then the second one is four stars. And then the final one is five stars The second again. one's four stars. And the final one okay. was like, oh, if you watch my vlog for that, you'll know. This is so interesting because I've heard a lot of people telling me I'm not going to like the ending of this series. Ignoring my pain. <laughs> but she is making me more optimistic because we're twins. So if she loves it, maybe I'll love it too. Okay, that could be a third one, depending on what else is left on the list. Yeah, this is the only YA on this list. Well written, great characters. Again, one of the only ones on this list were like- I love a YA mystery. I think a lot of times they serve the function of a cozy mystery for me, because they're just kind of palate cleansy. They on. So number three is- Number three? Murder on the Orient yes! Express by okay. Christie, this goes well. On this list. I gave this that five was, stars. I think first proper foray into murder mysteries like oh real murder i mysteries. love that for Obviously, her on this list another isolated one <laughs> i know she loves nancy drew so i would i would argue that was like her first but maybe her first adult one yeah Ugh, you can't beat now, queen agatha you are gonna okay. love either murder on the Orient express or and then there were none and you're gonna dislike the other see that's not true i love both but they are very i take her point they are very different books one is a mystery and one is I would describe as sort of like existential thriller yeah I agree it is more thrillery so a large proportion of this book literally like a big part part of this book is Oki interviewing yes literally half of this book is just him doing interviews which some people won't like but I love and I just think it's so clever that it keeps your attention even though literally most of this book is Oki sitting in a room interviewing. exactly like, how again the Agatha. ending of this the reveal is just like Incredible. Agatha Christie's mind. Her mind. Honestly, okay. her mind. I think that's number all three. So on any given day, this could switch. <laughs> like, it literally ignore the ranking here. They are both my number okay, one. Okay, so these number are her two faves. Is the Thursday murder Which I've been in interested in. Yup, 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 yup. So yep. I'm going to say that this is probably going to make me pull the trigger on reading this. Elderly friends in this like retirement village and a murder. I love old people, people solving it's murder. It's Thursday Murder Club because they have a murder club every Thursday where they go and try and solve cold cases together. It's kind of this is their, adorable. Their okay, yes, I am together. very excited but about this. But then an actual murder happens and they're like, oh shit, we should solve it. Now this has been very hit or miss for some people. I mean, it's been very popular, but some people are like, oh, I hate it. But it's very it's almost a cozy mystery almost yes, like it's okay. got that fun comedic element yeah i'm down for that but it's not like a full-on cozy that's a hard like tone to hit and if this does that bodes well okay okay and the fact that this is like what he's writing is absolutely amazing to me like it's so popular and it's like usually when celebrities write books i'm like oh he's a celebrity he, okay girl he ain't a celebrity on this side but of the with this, but it's so i'll take your good. word for it i feel like something that happens often in, in thrillers where there's a murder is it's a complete curveball uh -uh. i don't want to be i agree meg this is why we are twins i don't like it when it's just like a twist for the sake of a twist i'm fine figuring it out. And the number one on this fair. list okay. was another book. What's number one? Really What's number one? Getting me into reading murder mysteries, and that is the guest list Ooh. by Lucy Foley. I told you we'd be seeing book of the month, the Lucy Foley. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's going to be the one that um, we're going to have to respectfully disagree about. I can totally see why, based on what, like, I should like Lucy Foley. I should. I just don't. So we're going to respectfully disagree about that. But I think we had four that would fit. Okay, so we had... The one that I definitely need to read is The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman, for sure. Because that was the highest one up on the list for her, and I've already been interested in reading it. So I'm going to tell you also, I'm a little, this is not the list I would have picked. Like, I would have guessed she would pick, which I love. Like, it's, I'm very intrigued. I'm tantalized, intrigued titillated, maybe that's not the right word. I am intrigued by the fact that this was her list. I love that. So we've got to definitely read The Thursday Murder Club. I think we also have got to read The Devil in the Dark Water from Stuart Turton. Part of, <laughs> it's very hard for me to say his name without saying it in my native East Tennessee accent. I think I definitely have to read that one. Now I'm trying to decide 
between the cozy mystery she was talking about and the sequel to A Good Girl's Guide to Murder because she did mention that she loved the whole series. It is already on my TBR, so I feel like that would play well into me liking it. But I don't think that would be totally fair because the one that she put on the list was A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. And I've already read that. So I think I've talked myself into we're going to go with The Cozy Mystery, which I forget what it was called, In the Market for Murder. Also, it's pretty high up on the list. So I think that makes sense. Okay, so those are my three. In the Market for Murder, The Thursday Murder Club, and The Devil in the Dark Water. I'm really excited about this. I feel like this worked out perfectly. I'm riding high on the fact that we're twins. So let's get this popping. Okay, I've got my day of rest going. I just had an exciting shipment of vacation related things come. So I have my old lady visor. Me and my best friend decided that we are, we just have reached that point in our vacationing lives this year. So I will be sporting this across the United Kingdom. Uh, look for me in my gigantic visor. Uh, so that's exciting. And then I got a travel vlog camera because I realized this year when I was doing my taxes, it would behoove me to spend more on the channel because I'd rather spend that money on something I want than have to pay it back to the government. So got a GoPro. Looks like the reviews are pretty good and it was in my budget. So I'm gonna be taking this on vacation. But anyway, sorry, I'll open that later. We're checking in because I finished today in bed the Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. I think we should assess this on like, is this a twin-like recommendation? And then also, what did I think about it? Is this a twin-like recommendation? 1000% because this is very murder mystery. I mean, it's literally Thursday Murder Club, like it's this group of old folks who are living in sort of like a luxury retirement uh, community, I think called Cooper's Crossing, if I'm remembering rightly. Cooper's Chase, sorry. They have like discovered that they all have an interest in murdery things. So they get together every Thursday. They pretend that they're talking about Japanese opera, but actually they're talking about murderousness. So there's Joyce, Elizabeth, Ibrahim, and Ron. And so normally they're just talking about murders that have nothing to do with them, but there is this mustache twirling evil villain developer, Ian, I think, and he has this builder he's working with, Tony, and on the day that Ian fires Tony, Tony is murdered, and they are trying to put in like this additional development adjoining Cooper's chase that nobody wants except for the money hungry people. And we got to figure out who done it. So our murder club is going to work with uh, a local constable named Donna and a detective named Chris. All of that together, they're going to all try to solve this murder. So very much my vibe, what I like in kind of a mystery thriller type book. Definitely much more of a murder mystery than a mystery thriller. So I was down for that. You know, this is the unusual time when British humor I think didn't fully work with me. I tend to quite like the British sense of humor. It's usually pretty dry, pretty sarcastic, kind of absurdist. So like I can get into sort of the Monty Python end of things. But I, there was something about this, like there would be punchlines that I could tell I was supposed to get and I just didn't. So I'm wondering if this is more, like there's just more references that don't make sense to a non-British reader, which is valid and not a problem per se. But I just felt like the humor didn't connect with me as much as I think it would need to for me to love this. But I liked this. This was very quirky. It moved along at a nice clip and it was truly a murder mystery. It felt very Midsummer Murders. Like actually there's an episode, I think it's in season two, that has to do with like a developer getting killed that this actually reminded me a lot of. So definitely my kind of story. I don't think I absolutely loved this, but I had a good time. So I'm gonna give this like a three and a half, which for me is like a B plus. I think if I had connected with the humor more, I probably would have given this a four. So good recommendation, liked but didn't love. And our next book that I'm gonna start today, whilst I'm wasting away in bed like a Victorian tuberculosis patient, is In the Market for Murder by T.E. Kinsey. And yeah, this one is straight up cozy and it's historical. So that sounds pretty delightful. I am hopeful this is gonna be a cozy that I enjoy because you guys know I'm a little hit or miss with it, but with Meg's endorsement, I am going into this expecting to really enjoy it. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, so I finished In the Market for Murder by T.E. Kinsley. Kinsey? Kinsey, T.E. Kinsey. This is super fucking cute, guys. Okay, so this was, I felt like, the riskiest choice of the three because I'm, I'm a little bit of a hard sell on a cozy mystery, which is kind of funny considering that Agatha Christie is often considered sort of the queen or the progenitor of cozy mysteries, which I can see, but I don't know. It's a little bit different in my opinion. Anyway, that's probably a, a different conversation for a different time. Usually cozy mysteries written today are too like cutesy for me. If I want sort of a cutesy cheesy vibe, I'm more likely to pick up just like a contemporary romance rather than a mystery. But this was hella charming. I think that a high praise indeed. There were moments in this where the writing itself I would describe as Christie-esque because it was self-aware, it was easy breezy, it was funny and genuinely funny, not like cutesy funny. I don't know. I really liked the writing in this more than anything. I also really liked our characters. So we have Lady Hardcastle and her lady's maid Florence. And Florence is our point of view character, which I think was smart. I really like her as a point of view character. And basically they, this is, I guess is the second book in the series. In the first book, they solved a crime. And it seems like Lady Hardcastle and Florence have a history of being spies, but they're retired. So yeah, anyway, they already have been established as murder mystery solvers in the new area that they're living in. And a dude dies in a pub while eating his lunch. And he's eating with one of Lady Hardcastle's new friends that she's making in the neighborhood. And the friend and the local inspector who they worked with on the last case come and ask her and Florence to, you know, get on the case together. So I don't know that the mystery itself was like, amazing, but it was charming. I just, this was a really lovely vibe, a lovely hang. And I would absolutely read more of these. I think I remember Meg saying that the audio of this is really good. So I'm thinking that maybe when I'm in England, maybe I'll download a couple of these for like while I'm traveling audio. Yeah, super charmed and very pleasantly surprised because I felt like this was the one I potentially would like the least. And I actually would have told you that that Richard Osman one was the one I would like the best. So we're just, you know, up is down, left is right, cats and dogs living together. It's just chaos, but in a great way. So yeah, I would definitely recommend this. I would read more. This was a great recommendation that I definitely would not have picked up without this little project. So I'm excited maybe to have a new series to dip in and out of when I'm in the mood for a cozy. Alrighty, so I finished up The Devil in the Dark Water last night by Stuart Turton. I really like this more so than I think maybe I thought I was going to because I feel like at the time this got kind of mixed reviews, but I totally agree with Meg. This is very character driven and there's actually even an author's note at the end where he's kind of talking about like, I'm not great at having a clear genre that I'm writing in. So whatever you think that this is, I guess that's what it is. He's, I think he's pretty much trying to just say like, hey, if you're expecting super good historical accuracy, this ain't for you. So anyway, but that being said, this kind of reads like historical fiction. This kind of reads like a mystery. There's like a speculative element. Um, and I actually really like the way it all ended up coming together. It's very character driven. And I really liked the characters, particularly Sarah, who is married to this odious man who's like the governor. So I should just say what this is about a little bit more. You heard from Meg, I think, in the TBR definition stage, but basically this ship is going back to Amsterdam. It's like the 1630s, I think. And one of the people on board is a prisoner named Sammy Pips, Phipps, Pips, Pips, yeah. Um, who is a detective, maybe like a la Holmes or Poirot. And he has a bodyguard he's hired to take care of him who's also on board and going back. And before they go, this like creepy person who is a leper and you know, there's like witch type feelings about people with leprosy in this period. But anyway, there, he's like warning like, oh, there's something wrong with the ship. And Sammy is like, hey, I really do. I think he's right and we should investigate this. But everyone's like, shut up you. And they're gonna go on the trip anyway. So his bodyguard and Sarah, they have a very long trip ahead of them and they need to figure out like what, if anything is actually wrong with the ship. So I really enjoyed this and it is, I would say ultimately, yeah, it is a mystery. And I liked the way that piece wrapped up. I thought the wrap up of that was very satisfying, but I think this is mostly like 
character stuff, vibes, um, and if you like the character elements and the vibes, then I think you will like this book. Uh, if you don't like those things and you were expecting sort of a more traditional mystery kind of situation, I think you would be disappointed. But I really enjoyed this. I'm gonna give this four stars. <laughs> I think a pretty good hit. Rate for Meg. I really, let's see, which of, I probably would say I preferred In the Market for Murder just because it surprised me so much, but I liked it and The Devil in the Dark Water about the same. I think The Thursday Murder Club was just a little too British in its humor for me to love it, but it was still a good pick for me. Like it's the kind of thing I typically would like. So all in all, I feel like our twin status is established. If you don't follow Meg, you should definitely go follow her. I will have videos linked. Uh, and yeah, I think that does it for this little vlogging project. So if you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below, and I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today, and I will just talk to you soon. Bye!